I'm going to uh, call the City Council to come to order. Let the roll reflect that all council members are present with the exception of Council Member Hollenbeck. A quorum has been established. Approval of the minutes of the regular meeting on November 3rd. Council, tonight we have the, uh, the minutes of the regular meeting from November 3rd. Also the special meeting on November 6th. Any additions or corrections to the minutes of those meetings? Seeing none, they stand approved. Uh, next on our agenda is to uh, welcome some new city employees. And Melanie, I'll turn that over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor and Council and members of the public, those that are watching on TV. This is one of the, the more fun things I get to do as city administrator, and uh, it's welcoming our new staff on board. We've had a lot of new staff over the last 18 months to two years, and uh, we've gotten to the habit of inviting the inviting them into a council meeting and uh, making sure that the city council and the public gets to see who's joining our team so um, right now we've got um, our newest police officer Scott Svoboda Scott why don't you come on up please so we'll do a brief little introduction and then we'll do the formalities why you come right on over here um, of taking the oath of office and getting your badge pinned on but first of all I'd like to tell a little bit about how we got here today Scott was one of 139 applicants for the police officer position. That's one opening. And we had quite a strong um, showing. We invited 25 people to come into a two panel process in fitness testing. It was narrowed down to six people from there. And then four folks were thoroughly backgrounded. And I'm happy to say Scott rose to the top in every step of the process. Um, we were enthusiastic about making the job offer to him and thrilled when he chose to take the position a little bit about Scott he was raised in Wisconsin but we will still welcome him with open arms he brings a biology degree and has an interesting background in as a medical in the medical sciences field he also served with the Stillwater Police Department Reserve Program Scott has indicated that he feels that the department has a meaningful connection with the community and is open and accessible. That's exactly what we want to hear. That's the exact kind of organization and department we want to be. I'd like to welcome Scott to the organization. And before we go through the formalities of taking the oath of office and having his badge pinned, I would like to thank every member of the department for their involvement. I think most everybody had some role in either this hiring process or the most recent hiring process. We also have members of the community. And I see a couple of our Public Safety Advisory Commission members are here they're also involved. So through this robust process, we get very, very um, good. It's a very good process and we get very strong candidates and we get new employees like Scott. So thank you very much and it's now time for the oath. Hi, Scott Sabota. Solidly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution, of the State of Minnesota, and the ordinances, and the ordinances of, the city of Hastings, of the City of Hastings, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of police officer. And I'll faithfully, faithfully discharge the duties of a police officer of the City of Hastings, of the City of Hastings, counties of Dakota and Washington. Counties of Dakota and Washington, and state of Minnesota, and state of Minnesota, according to the best of my ability and understanding. Best of my according ability and understanding. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm looking for the chief. I, I understand your Katie, your wife is going to do the pinning. Like, come on up. <laughs> All right. I'd like to uh, pray for a new officer, and if I could, Father, I just pray today for Scott, that you be with him to protect him and keep him safe as well as his family, 
that you give them courage in the line of duty. Lord God, that you just be with them every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to give you this. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Scott, I just want to take this opportunity on behalf of the community to welcome you to uh, one of the great departments in the state of Minnesota, the city of Hastings, and we're very pleased to have you with us. You will find that uh, the dedication that is exhibited among our uh, officers, our reserve officers, our public safety officials, our uh, fire department is outstanding. And I think that it's a, it's a great opportunity that you've joined an outstanding team, and we look very much forward to you serving our citizens and our community and wish you all the best. Thank you. There's, there's coffee and cake upstairs for the family and the officers. So, so There'll be a reception upstairs starting now. Yeah. If we get out of here, we might join you. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, we'll resume the meeting here. Melanie, I think we want to recognize uh, uh, another individual who's here. And uh, we're going to take this opportunity to recognize another new employee. Melanie, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Your Honor and Counsel. We, uh, we are fortunate to have another employee to welcome. It's Bryce Thompson. Um, Bryce is our newest public works operator. And uh, he is, this position, is a, it's a interesting position. It's responsible for a complicated set of really skilled maintenance and, and repair of our city's infrastructure. So a really fundamentally important position. And we ask these folks to work in all sorts of weather conditions, all days of the week and days of the uh, hours of the day. And uh, we want to make sure that our infrastructure is at the ready for the public and Bryce is going to help us with that and the, joining our team. I mentioned we had over, uh, uh, with, with the police officer, we had about a, uh, a high number of applications. We had over 50 for this position. That's a very good number for this position. Uh, we went through another very thorough hiring process, including Bryce came and spent a half a day with our folks just to make sure it was the right fit for both him and, and the organization. So um, Bryce, you want to join us up here? Come on up. He grew up near Prescott, another Wisconsin, but again, we will welcome him to the organization. Um, has a wide range of experience yep. um, with equipment. He holds a degree in conservation with a minor in GIS um, mapping. Those are both two skill sets that are very, very relevant to our public works department and th we think it's a really good fit. He started with us just a few weeks ago and we've already been impressed with his work ethic and um, his contributions. So your honor and counsel, Bryce Thompson, thank you. Right, so on behalf of the council and our citizens, welcome aboard, and uh, we're glad to have you on board. And it sounds like your credentials are, are outstanding. And I'll just have you know that it's no coincidence that you're here tonight, and also we're talking about snow removal operations. Uh, what, what, wouldn't you guess, huh? So, but uh, we're really glad to have you on our team. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, council. Uh, our next is items to be considered. Is there any additional items to be considered this evening? Seeing none, we'll go to consent agenda. Council, what's your wish? 
Councilmember Rivnes makes a motion to approve, second by Councilmember Nelson. That motion is now before the body. Is there any discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. We'll go to awarding of contracts and public hearing. We have a uh, public hearing tonight in regards to the second reading and ordinance amendment to chapter uh, 71.07 pertaining to parking restrictions during snow removal operations. Uh, I'll do that. Okay, and so I'm going to turn that over to Melanie for a presentation. Your Honor, thank you. Your Honor and Council, you're asked to do um, to consider two actions tonight. One is to hold a public hearing and consider an ordinance amendment for Chapter 7107. It references our snow removal restrictions for a snow emergency. Um, current language is fairly outdated, pretty complicated. Um, the proposed language before you it really just cleans it up. It maintains that two inch threshold for when cars must be moved off the streets so our operators can clean them from curb to curb. So you're asked to hold the public hearing and consider that um, ordinance amendment at, that, at this time. If you'd like, Your Honor, I can go through the rest of the items related to snow emergency, or we can... Well, let's open up the public hearing. Certainly. And we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to open up the public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to ordinance amendment uh, to Chapter 71 relating to parking restrictions during snow removal operations? Okay, anyone here who wish to speak to that? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Melanie, did you want to explain a couple more things? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Um, as part of an um, administrative committee meeting and their recommendations a number of weeks ago, we have a, a multi-tiered approach to snow removal for this season. Um, again, the, the ordinance amendment, which is maintaining the two-inch snowfall threshold um, that you'll be asked to act upon. Item two is considering an amendment to the penalty structure. Right now the penalty is about $26, $27 for a snowbird ticket. The committee recommended a higher um, thresh, a higher fine amount. So staff is proposing um, a $60 fine and then on top of that will be state um, uh, fees and charges for a total fine amount of $77. The third recommendation by the committee is to institute a text, phone, email notification system so the public can opt in to be notified by any of those methods um, for snow emergency events. Um, the final two pieces is that um, staff will be flyering. We've printed out some flyers or, a, or we have a template ready so we can help educate the public. So as our operators are out in the field and they see um, cars that would be in violation of the snow emergency, we can provide a reminder to them. Um, so it's another piece of the communications uh, goal of this whole operation. And finally, we will be um, pulling in additional police officers to enhance our ticketing efforts. The goal isn't to increase our revenues as much as it is to educate the public on the importance of removing their vehicles from the streets during a snowfall and that uh, that helps our operations and that helps all everybody move around the city better so with those those two actions specifically your honor the ordinance amendment and then directing staff to increase the fine for the penalty for the the snow ticket uh, violation so two actions before you tonight okay council we're going to take up a, a one of the agenda the second reading ordinance amendment um, that issue is now before the body but what is your wish Councilmember Balsanic makes a motion to approve, seconded by Councilmember Alonji. That motion is now before the body. Is there any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Next uh, is to approve the citation increase uh, for snow emergency parking violation. Uh, again, uh, currently that's, I think, it's $26, in which about 16 of it goes to state fees, and we, the city collects about 10 or, or so. Uh, that will be increased to uh, $60, and then you add the state fees and court costs, that comes to 77 total. Uh, what is your wish, Council? Councilmember Schultz, Council Schultz makes a motion to approve, second by Councilmember Alonji. Councilmember Alonji. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to uh, review this briefly for the Council. I'm uh, optimistic that this is the kind of thing that we can all agree on is a good idea. 
it boils down to a couple of simple truths uh, for folks, and I'm going to be a little blunter uh, than than uh, than perhaps usual here, but still uh, respectful of the fact that people have cars that they need to park somewhere, and I get that sometimes it can be difficult. Still, when it snows, don't park your car in the street. Uh, I think that's just got to be the basic uh, rule here. And when we asked the community for their feedback, and we said, boy, there's lots of different ways we can go about this, the overwhelming feedback we got, there are lots of little ideas, everybody can come up with ways to park over here that time and that time, why don't we try this, and why doesn't the city think of that? The city thought of it, okay? We thought of it. If we didn't think of it, we got that feedback, and then we thought of it, and then we forewent it. Uh, because the overwhelming majority of folks who got back to us uh, said what a lot of us were already thinking, which is, why don't we just have the people who are not following the ordinance uh, pay more because they're not getting it uh, yet? Uh, and why don't we make sure that we uh, have, you know, we, we respect the police officer time and the snowplow time and make sure that these public servants can get their job done? Because when they don't get their job done, uh, we, we hear it from that side too. And we'd like to avoid that. We'd like to avoid that kind of misunderstanding. So we put the responsibility where it belongs, which is with the owner of the car. Uh, when government is working best, I believe, we, we encourage individual responsibility, and that's what we've got going on here. So I'm really uh, pleased with where we've gotten uh, with this. Uh, I don't expect it to solve every problem. I'm sure that we will still have folks uh, who, who, don't, um, you know, who, don't remove their, move, who don't move their cars when they need to move their cars. Uh, but this is the right enforcement mechanism. It has my full support. I encourage the support of the council, and I do appreciate the cooperation of the public uh, as they determine where where to get that car, uh, try, you know, watch that weather report, and if it looks like it's going to be more than just a dusting, please, please, please move your car. Uh, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, council members. Is there uh, further discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Next, uh, we'll go to community development. We have a resolution before the City Council in regards to the preliminary and final plat of South Pines 8, Greg J. Holmes. Uh, John, welcome to the meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. I'm just going to put up a drawing, a couple of maps here of the development we're looking at tonight. Try it again here. I'll start talking and the image will come up here in just a moment. What we have before us tonight is the preliminary and final plat approval of South Pines 8th edition. Now, Council may recall that uh, South Pines is a development right off 316 and Tuttle Drive on the southern end of Hastings. What's before us tonight is a subdivision on Sandpiper Circle just north of Tuttle Drive. And the image is slowly coming up behind you there. It was. There we go. Okay. So the area that we're looking at is right here off the of Sandpiper Circle. There'd be a few lots here, as well as six lots on this portion of Tuttle Drive. The zoning for the property is R2, medium density residence. Future land use is medium density residential. Both of those are consistent with the development that we have before us tonight. Uh, Greg J. Holmes is the applicant. It's part of a uh, multi-phase development along Sandpiper Circle. This would be the first phase up here where you see these lots over here on block one and two. This would lend to a small extension of Sandpiper Circle to accomplish these properties here. The remainder of Sandpiper Circle between Tuttle Drive and where it ends at this point would be unimproved at this standpoint. Tuttle Drive is improved as it goes to the west and then six more lots at this location. You may recall this is part of a larger subdivision or a larger development plan for South Pines. This is what it encompasses. This is the remainder of the South Pines area. The development portion includes these 56 townhomes or twin homes on the east of the development as well as the residential development down here. I'll uh, provide some detail in just a moment on some of the, some of the studies, some of the implications that uh, we've contemplated with the development of this property in just a moment. Now, the Planning Commission did review this on a couple of different occasions. Uh, starting on October 27th, we discussed the project. We did have quite an outpouring of people from the public at that meeting as well, probably 30, 40 people in attendance. Primary concerns for the public at that standpoint were an uncertainty as to what the homes would be. Uh, most of the people that were at that meeting resided in the twin homes, the clubs of South Pines that are on the east side of Sandpiper Circle, 
There's some curiosity as to, as to what these poems would be, making sure that they would be consistent with the values and the type of style that they had in their homes. Another major consideration that came up at that meeting was on the intersection of Tuttle Drive and Highway 316. When you take a look at the development, Hi Tuttle Drive and Highway 6 316, this is the only way in and out onto Highway 316. There is no access to the east, to the west here, excuse me. Right now, this area to the west is outside of the city of Hastings. There are future plans uh, upon annexation that would extend Tuttle Drive to the west, but at present, this is the only way in and out of the development. So there was concern from the neighbors that additional traffic at that intersection would, content, would, would make a difficult situation even more difficult at this standpoint. After that 27th meeting, the Planning Commission voted to table the item, wanted to have some further discussions with MnDOT over anything that could be done at that intersection. During that time, we also held a neighborhood meeting on a, now November 7th, 6th, in which another 30, 40 people showed up for that one, got to learn a little bit more about the housing styles, a little bit on MnDOT, and then November 10th brought the full commission back in. Uh, there was a vote of 4-2 to recommend approval of the plat at that standpoint. We did have a discussion with MnDOT. What we learned at the intersection is that Tuttle Drive and Highway 316 does not meet traffic warrants for any sort of intersection improvements. Essentially, since Highway 316 is a state highway, any improvements such as a traffic circle or stoplight, pedestrian crossing, that sort of item, would need to make certain warrants, uh, basically certain traffic numbers. And the traffic on Tuttle Drive entering the intersection did not meet the numbers necessary in order to meet the minimum requirements for the improvements at that intersection. There was also some discussion on the November 10th meeting as well on uh, Sandpiper Circle, the unimproved portion of it, and construction traffic, whether construction traffic would would be able to use that, whether we should mandate the use of that, or whether uh, they would be allowed to come through Sandpiper Circle through the improved portion of the South Pines development. Ultimately, the Planning Commission did decide uh, to add a condition to the approval on the resolution before you that heavy equipment uh, must use that unimproved portion of Sandpiper Circle. That's something that we would memorialize in greater detail as the development agreement moves forward. Traffic has been a major consideration at the subdivision. Even when we looked at the original plan of it back in 2001 for South Pines 4, at that time we developed a, a three-phase approach to it. After the first phase was developed, we mandated that a traffic study be conducted that would show what we term a level of sea service or better. Essentially, a, a certain level of service would need, to be, would need to be achieved at the intersection of Tuttle and Highway 316. A traffic study was conducted in 2005, did find out the traffic operated at that C threshold except for the left turn to 316, which is no surprise from anyone who's tried to make that turn. It's very difficult. So during 2005, 2013, there was some discussions with MnDOT on traffic control measures, what could be done since warrants were not met or would not be met in the future. Nothing was done on that. In 2013, the council and the planning committee was asked to uh, consider a vehicle gap study in, in addition to the traffic study. New traffic study was done, uh, still did not operate at a level of service of C. However, a gap study was done at that time. This was something that the council looked at, I think it's September, October of last year. Essentially what this gap study did is took a look at what a vehicle needs to make that left-hand turn. It was determined, I think, eight and a half seconds is what's needed. They took a look at the track with volume there at present and also upon full development of the subdivision, analyzed the gaps that were available, found there were gaps available, albeit one would have to wait. After looking at that development and after looking at that gap study, the council did, uh, make the rec did make the decision to allow further phases of South Pines to move forward. So that's where we're at here tonight. This goes through a little bit of some of the thresholds for intersection improvements. You can see there's only one right now between 7 and 8 a.m. that meets those intersection improvements and you have to have a majority of that throughout the day for MnDOT to consider improvements. 
Essentially, what will need to happen for things on Highway 316 at Tuttle Drive to improve as far as the uh, intersection controls would be for the remainder of this area to develop and maybe even a little bit more to the west here. As I mentioned previously, the, the ultimate plan, if this property was to come forward for development, right now it's within our comprehensive plan to do so. However, there's, uh, the, the owners have not made it certain whether, what their plans are in the future. But Tuttle Drive could be extended all the way to Highway 61, which would lead to a right-hand turn and a much more easy way to get in and out of that subdivision. As I mentioned before, we did talk to MnDOT about the uh, intersection improvements, thresholds not being met on that one. We also talked to them about the speed limit as well. We did have some discussions with the neighbors at the Planning Commission meeting that uh, speed in that area was excessive. Uh, some, of the, some of the analysis that MnDOT has done down there has found that currently it's posted at 45 miles an hour. What they're seeing is generally drivers in the 50 mile per hour range. Based upon what, we've, what, what they've seen and what we've seen from traffic studies in the future, they base it off of what they term an 85th percentile of traffic. Essentially, whatever 85% of the people are driving, that's what the speed limit should be set at. And so there's some, some concern that if a traffic study was to be done to take a look at the speed limit of that area, with the existing speed being at that 50 mile an hour range, the result may be something opposite of what was intended. As far as accidents at the intersection, there's been nine crashes since over the last 10 years, which MnDOT terms a relatively low amount, one fatality down uh, near Michael Avenue in 2001 prior to the development of this property. So before you tonight, uh, we do have the Planning Commission recommendation in the plat before you. Uh, the developer, Mr. Jablonski, is here as well if you have any questions for him, and I can stand for any questions as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that fine presentation, John. Council, this uh, issue is before the body. What's your wish? Council Member Schultz. Your Honor, I have a couple questions. Thank you. Um, John, um, because Highway 316 is a state highway, we can't control, we couldn't construct a roundabout. We have no um, way to, to um, install traffic lights or anything. It, it has, they have to go along with um, such a project. Am I correct? Uh, that's correct, Council Member. So whatever they tell us, it's kind of, we have no control. Anything that would be done within that right of way, so any traffic control that would involve 316, yes, they, they would need to consent to it. Okay, which doesn't sound like they're going to do, at least not for a while. Um, Your Honor, when this, when this area started to get developed, and this was a good, well, 16 years ago, about 15 years ago, um, we had a lot of discussion about the traffic issues um, and 316 got, uh, we, we did reconstruction on 316, which really helped, but the, the traffic concerns have continued out there. And I'm wondering if it might be time for us, probably after the first of the year or so, to remand the issue of extending Tuttle Drive to the Planning Committee to talk about where we might be headed. Because every time a development comes through, we have another issue, the residents are upset, and we stand here and go, well, MnDOT said no, we can't do anything, so let's take the issue into our control and do what we need to do to extend that road that way so that people can, can make their right turn onto Highway 61 and the issue then takes care of itself. Um, that's my suggestion on this. Um, I'm, you know, I understand that uh, Mr. Jablonski's got the right to do this development, and we've done all that, but it doesn't make me very happy that, once again, we've got all the residents coming out saying, we don't like the traffic out here, we can't make our turns, we don't think it's safe, and as a city, we have no control. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Balsanek. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Going along with uh, what uh, Council Member Schultz just said, what is the um, plan for the property to the west on our comprehensive plan? Sure. to the west of South Pines. Sure. Council member, the area to the west over here, which extends over to Highway 61, it is within our comprehensive plan for development. And so if a request was made, uh, it would be consistent with that. Presently, it's outside of our city limits. It's within uh, Marshan Township. And the ownership situation on the property, from what I understand, is uh, 
not clear as to whether development is desired or not. My understanding is that it's a, it's a joint owners of the property and they have not come to any common agreement for uh, development on it. Uh, you may recall that probably about eight years ago, we were asked uh, to consider an annexation there of that property, uh, but I have not heard any such request in the last couple of years. What, what is it zoned right now? Right now, it would not be zoned within our city limits. It it's, would be in uh, Marchand Township. It's guided within our comprehensive plan, primarily single family residential. There is some some scattering of um, mid-density residential development within there in our comprehensive guide plan. I, I really agree with Council Member Schultz. I, it was a strange phone call that I got, uh, oh gosh, it was a, about a year and a half ago from a constituent. She and her husband were retiring. They wanted to move over uh, into uh, this development area, but she was scared to death of Tuttle Drive, Tuttle Drive and 316. And um, it, 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 in an email that I got from Mr. Jablonski, he very astutely pointed out that 316 is a state highway going right through a residential area. And uh, it, it's just, uh, I, I don't want to say it's crazy. I mean, it's just, you know, development happens. Uh, this is the way things turned out, but you've got a state road going through a residential area and uh, it's it's disappointing uh, so what do you do you do a roundabout the state's not interested we can't afford it uh, second thing you take Tuttle Drive and you extend it to the west over to 61 you have to work with Martian Township uh, there is a third opportunity uh, and and that might be to see if the state would be interested in moving 316 over to 61 and then uh, uh, shooting it over to the uh, uh, to the regular path of 316 further south of the city and that way we we turn that section of 316 into a city street <coughs> <coughs> that's a big effort and, and I'm I, I guess we can all imagine what the state's probably going to say to that uh, if, if we were to bring it up but uh, it, you know it's one thing to have a state road going through and you've got residences that are on a setback of 150 feet 200 feet and so forth but we've got uh, city lots that are within you know 60 feet or less of the uh, of the thoroughfare <clears throat> and it would just would make sense if we could somehow get 316 moved out of there that would be my vote. But in the meantime, I, I really do think it would be a good idea for us to see what we can do after the first of the year uh, and, and get Tuttle moving out to the west, hooking up with 61. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Member Nelson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, John, the original South Pines plan, how can that be changed at all? I mean, I, Maybe leave that other slide back up there for a second, John. Sorry, okay, the, the, the original one with the Marshan Township there. Oh, sure. Yeah, sorry. Not um, a problem. There you go. There seems to be, there's a road there. I, I know a couple of people that live out that way. The King Drive, I didn't know the name of it until yeah. tonight, but King Drive, I mean, development has slowed a little bit in this area. Is there a way to make Tuttle or even Sandpiper Circle connect to that? And we're just taking a small section out of that um, Marshan Township property at that point, maybe even annexation of that part, or even, I, I, I don't want to use the, any other terms there, but I mean, is there any other way to take a small section of that area to make that road meet up, sure. to give people the option to go west, to get to 61? Not saying that that's going to be something people might be interested in, but at least it's another option. It's, it's, it's relatively close by without going all the way to 61. Sure. You know, so the point is, is is that can that plan be amended to accommodate something like that sure I, I suppose that's possible uh, the concern I think we'd have with King Drive here is is Tiffany Drive King Drive to Tiffany Drive up to about 36 which I believe is about right here it's a little bit circuitous for a lot of traffic volume especially if we've got 
substantial development in the future down here to be, be coming up that way. And I, with the development there with the number of homes, the twin homes and so forth, and uh, being a little bit tighter on the corner here, we have some concerns about that over time. When you take a look at the, I think Highway 61 is probably just right off of the map right here. If you were to square this off, Highway 61 would be right about here. So, you know, we're, we're looking at about a quarter mile distance that would be needed to get over there. And ultimately, that would be the best one. But I guess to answer your question, Council Member, in the short term, it, it's, it's possible, I suppose. But I think I'd have some concerns about the, uh, the amount of traffic on Tiffany and its ability to handle it. Well, I, I was, my thought was is that we're not talking a lot of homes here. We're talking about another 19. Um, of course, the market dictates how often mm -hmm. um, Mr. Jablonski or any other developer over there is going to you know, go on with phase 2A or 2B or 3 or 4 or whatever sure. phase it's going to go into. Um, you know, so I was thinking maybe a short-term fix for, you know, again, just the option for mm -hmm. a handful more homes coming in there and then even some of the folks that are out there now um, to connect to a different road to get there. Sure. Thanks, John. Uh, Council, I just want to uh, just I just have a few comments. First of all, I think we have to remember what we did a year ago, and we had a committee hearing about it. And the council passed it, and we agreed that the warrants uh, at that intersection uh, uh, wouldn't change whether this whole section was developed or not. Now, I've heard a couple of suggestions that well, maybe we ought to hold here. Well, I, I, where, are we being consistent? Uh, we know that if we fill out the rest of the development here, we agreed to a year ago say, well, it's going to meet the warrants. And so uh, let development proceed. I hate to say a year later we changed our mind again. Uh, uh, so I, th I think we have to be careful if we're going to have that kind of a discussion. Second, I think that, uh, you know, if you take a look at the 2030 transportation plan, Councilmember Balsanix brings up a very good point. It's in the plan. Uh, where 316 meets, I think it was, what's that highway, 1, 160th Street? 170th, yeah. And 170th, that in the transportation plan with Dakota County, 316 comes into 170th and diverts the traffic to 61. And then also one, uh, 170th, I think, heads out to uh, uh, 50, Highway 52. That's already in the plan. And maybe what we need to do is uh, contact and talk to our friends from Dakota County and see how serious we can be about making that extension happen. So that's already in the works. We've already had that bypass planned. And perhaps we have to st step up our efforts and to see if that, that can happen. I know Dakota County has shown some interest in that, in that uh, particular uh, design of our southern transportation. Let's, let's pursue that more. Uh, uh, third, uh, we, we, the, the property just to the west of the development is not annexed yet. Now, I remember we had a discussion in 2006 when things were really hot and rolling. And I talked to a couple of developers actually who wanted to uh, annex into the city. Uh, right when we were at the uh, edge of talking about that, 2008 happened. We all know what happened. So we haven't had any much interest. But I think what we can do is uh, have an understanding with anybody who comes forward with that parcel that an extension of Tuttle is the first thing that they're going to do. And we can have that understanding up front that, yes, we'll, we'll let you annex in the western part, but once you annex, you know, annex that into the city, we'll see your phase one development. But any part of any phase one would include an extension all the way to 61, and we can require that. So I think that's how we handle that in the immediate future um, in, in terms of any interest to develop the southern part of the city and that part, particular property. I think one of the things we can look at now, and I know it's like beating our head against the wall because we know MnDOT has control, but we can pass a resolution in this council to uh, extend the request that it be 30, what is it, 35 miles per hour right there right now and through uh, 316 <coughs> through the neighborhood, extend that to Michael Avenue and say, listen, you're coming into our city just as much at Michael Avenue as you are at Malcolm. And so we want to extend that another two or three or four, what, a quarter of a mile to Michael Avenue and to start the 35 miles per hour there. Um, and make the same argument why we, we, we have the, uh, the, the 35 where it exists at Mill. Hey, you're coming into our city now, slow down. And uh, I think we ought to make that 
a resolution and pass that along to MnDOT and say we want it to go to Michael Avenue. Okay, so those that's how I look at this particular issue and, and with those points. Councilmember Schultz, um, Your Honor, I I hope you didn't misunderstand what I said. I didn't say that we should take this issue and remand it. I no, the development we've got I, we passed what we passed and and and. This wasn't an issue for what five years because we didn't have any development. I fully understand that. You mean the issue just kind of dropped off the table because nothing was going on. Um, but my my suggestion was much as what you're saying. Okay, you know now that things are starting to pick up and we're going to probably get into some more development issues, we need to look at this again, and we've got to start talking to the people that uh, could make a difference for us because otherwise, like I said, it's just going to keep coming back all the time. We're going to have the same issue and we're going to stand there and say, well, we don't have any control. So it's time for us to have control so that we can do what's right for our citizens and for our city. So, thank you. Very good. Councilmember Balsanic. Yeah, just to echo that, I, I am not opposed to the resolution. Uh, I, I think it should go forward, but I think we need to look at the uh, comprehensive view and uh, see what we can do to get 316 out of there. That would be the, that would be the best bet. Um, we're, you know things are things are looking up from a development standpoint housing standpoint uh, there, there's only going to be more residences moving in we're going to have more traffic uh, we should take the bull by the horns uh, councilmember Alonji uh, thank you your honor uh, if you do entertain a motion with an amendment perhaps to include a resolution uh, or would you want that separately? Uh, you know, I can take the main motion now, and then I'll, I'll uh, open that up for amendment. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion for staff um, approval. And once it's seconded, I do have a question. Okay, Councilmember um, Alonji makes a motion to accept the Planning Commission recommendation and uh, seconded by Councilmember Balsanic. Now that motion is now before the body. Councilmember Thank Alonji. you. Thank you, Your Honor. John, can you clarify for me that the... the, the the Planning Commission voted to re recommend approval by a vote of four to two. The two that were opposed was traffic. The reason why? I, I believe so. There wasn't a specific statement to that regard, but based upon the comments from the meeting, I would suspect that's the reason. Okay. Thank you for that insight, uh, Your Honor. I, I would like to include with this some. I mean, this is something that is a campaign theme of mine. Some of this, some of what was happening down, and we've made some improvements down there with the help of our state legislators, both Democrat and Republican. Uh, we've gotten some uh, good things here, the, the, the flashing speed sign deal down there and uh, some of the other considerations that we've got, we got there. We've got additional police enforcement to be down there and look at um, you know, the traffic control. No solution is perfect. Uh, human beings just have a way of messing things up just as often as we do things right. Uh, it's just who we are. Uh, but the fact is that we have given this area some attention. We will continue to give it attention. We appreciate that folks there are worried for the safety. I'm relieved that uh, the MnDOT's numbers, while there are still accidents, which are terrifying in and of themselves, I'm relieved to see that there are no fatalities in the immediate vicinity um, in, uh, and with the one fatal um, deeply unfortunate fatality down um, by Michael Avenue. But this intersection in particular, MnDOT's going to look at this. They're going to run their numbers against all the other intersections where there are people who have gotten into fatal accidents. And they're going to say, why wouldn't we invest taxpayer dollars in those first? And they've got to look across the whole state, folks. They can't just look in our corner of the world as awesome as our corner of the world is. Um, it is something that they, gotta, they have to weigh all those options. Uh, so somewhere out there, there's an intersection right now where people are crashing into each other, and the results are less pretty than they are here in Hastings. So uh, please understand why some of the things are the way they are. It's not because these agencies don't care. It's because they um, have to spread that care across a very wide area. Uh, so that said, I don't see any reason why we can't push them a little bit to care a little bit more. And I think, uh, Your Honor, that your idea about uh, sliding the uh, speed limit so, so that the 35 mile per hour speed limit is uh, at the city uh, at the city borders is frankly consistent with what I see in a lot of other U.S. and state highways everywhere. I mean, I, I, I drive around the state a ton, and it's part of my day job and part of my recreation. I know we all do, and we see all the time. You're, you're driving along at about 55 you know, miles per hour, whatever the speed limit happens to be in the, the, the large expanses, then you know you're entering a city, and it's almost always 35, if not 25, depending on the size of the town and the control of the intersections. So why anybody would be surprised to see that coming into Hastings or leaving Hastings 
is is beyond me. Um, I do respect what staff are relaying regarding the speed limits, the moral hazard that comes with expecting traffic to be a certain way. I, I just I just think that when people see houses on either side and they see that the speed limit is a certain amount, uh, the more consistent we can be from city to city, the better. Uh, so with that said, Your Honor, I, I guess I'm moving to amend my own motion to include a resolution uh, adopted by the City Council expressing to MnDOT our concern about the area, understanding why they make the decisions they make, and asking them yet to reconsider uh, to reconsider that that speed um, mile per hour um, the speed limit uh, there. For uh, clarification, Councilmember, mm -hmm. then we'll ask as part of an amendment, as part mm -hmm. of this process, that that the staff prepare. Mm -hmm. that resolution at our next council meeting yes that would be the actual because we have to actually see it and then pass it thank you for clarifying yeah, we need some whereas and yeah the whereas and such uh, I'd also I'd also like that to, to for consideration by the council understanding that that this that what I'm about to add may be a little more controversial and maybe more of a long shot to push the One idea second, of, council member you made a motion yeah, to amend sure. is there a second to that motion well it's it's, it's a continuation of the of the motion okay. if you wouldn't mind which is okay. which is also to include in that Resol draft resolution language about asking them to look at a roundabout again um, so uh, it's, it's ironic that about five ten years ago I can remember people talking about a roundabout people going why would anybody want a roundabout what a, what a, what a you know what a silly idea a silly idea why 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 is why are people pushing these roundabouts but and now I do hear more often than not why can't we have a roundabout there <laughs> um, so I'm glad that they're working as a public innovation I'd like it to accelerate the adoption of one if possible Okay, Councilmember Alonji makes a motion to amend uh, to include uh, as part of this uh, package here that uh, staff prepare a resolution that would request that the speed limit of 35 miles per hour be extended to Michael Avenue and that the state of Minnesota transportation uh, look at the possibilities of roundabout and any future redevelopment of that highway. Seconded by Councilmember Balsanic. To the amendment, we have the Alonji amendment before us. Is there any further discussion to the Alonji amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the Alonji Amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. That motion prevails. We have before us now the preliminary final plat uh, with, the, uh, with the amendment. Is there any further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Then we have now a, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, Council, we have a resolution next on the agenda dealing with the amended special use permit for Artdale Sales and Storage, uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, Councilmember Hollenbeck is not here, the fact that it requires a supermajority of vote, uh, I would ask Council and that the no the folks that were notified who were going to be here were notified to, that uh, we would be less member here, that we table this action until the next Council meeting. Okay, Councilmember Alonji makes a motion to table, seconded by Councilmember Rivnes. Uh, that's a non-debatable motion. All those in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Okay, we'll go to the administration part of our meeting to approve the Riverfront Renaissance Phase 2 and River Place Pavilion uh, Agreement. Melanie. Your Honor and Council, you're asked to consider two actions tonight. I'm going to walk through some, some background and context for you and then um, ask that you consider two different actions. As you're well aware, um, the city has been working for the last several months on the phase two of the Riverfront Renaissance project. This portion of the project includes the parking lot, levee park improvements, and um, that vicinity. A key feature of the phase two while it is that, that, that it's been planned around or incorporated into our plans is the Hastings Rotary Club's River Place Pavilion project. Um, so as we have been putting the logistics together to be able to bid this phase two project in early part of 2015, we needed to really dig into the phasing and the coordination on construction of the pavilion project because it's kind of in the middle of the entire project so as we as we were looking through this we um, we needed to consider whether we wanted to explore partnering with the rotary for the project to be completed as part of the 2015 construction process so on November 3rd the Finance Committee met and we discussed a number of options and frankly whether the committee would be supportive of of reaching out to the Rotary and having a conversation about whether we want to work together for a 2015 construction schedule. 
Um, the Finance Committee recognized a number of factors. One is the logistics of the project, the Phase Two project, and the, the, the complications, if as you will, of not doing the pavilion in 2015. The committee also recognized that we have capacity within our parks capital budget fund balance. We are, we are in excess of our, our minimum threshold, so there is capacity. And the committee also recognized that the Rotary has raised nearly 290000 towards an estimated $500,000 project leaving about a $210,000 gap, again, which there is capacity in the Parks Capital Fund. And finally, um, the, the fact that we are we're kind of at that tipping point with trying to finalize the plans and specifications. So based on all of those factors, the Finance Committee uh, directed staff to go reach out to the Rotary and talk about whether we could partner for a 2015 construction. Um, and at the last Thursday's Rotary meeting, the Rotary organization um, recommended proceeding with partnering with the city to construct the pavilion as part of the 2015 Riverfront Renaissance Phase Two construction process. What that means is that we would provide gap funding up to the $500,000 threshold to facilitate the project moving forward next year. Um, the Rotary is committed to f continuing to fundraise from their current 290 to the 500,000 and um, and pay the city back. Two actions that are requested of the council tonight is to authorize staff to amend our contract with Bolton and Mink um, to incorporate the the pavilion piece into phase two of the Riverfront Renaissance project and then to direct staff to develop an agreement between the city and the Rotary memorializing the um, the gap funding that is being provided um, and I will be happy to stand for any questions thank you Melanie for uh, explaining that uh, presentation there getting us up to date on that and the action before us uh, council this issue is, is, is before the body uh, is there any discussion council member Balsanic thank you mayor uh, has anyone from our staff looked at uh, the design plans and specifications for the pavilion council member in council um, we have reached out to the rotary they have provided some structural documentation we've been working with Bolton and Mink to see what it would take to um, incorporate that into the the scope of work as it were the amended scope of work and and, and that's why I'm asking um, their budget is 500,000 um, suppose there's something in there and all of a sudden it's like 510,000 or 515,000 something you know it could certainly go the other way under under 500,000 but we're building this this is going to be around for as long as the bridge I, I don't know uh, quite some time and if we're going to build it I want to be able to build it uh, correctly uh, so that we've got the appropriate amenities uh, whether that's a good speaker system uh, acoustics I, I don't know uh, but I have not seen the plans so not that I'm going to sit there and nitpick them or, or anything but I just want assurances that uh, that somebody from from the city is looking over things with a fine-tooth comb so we know that it is uh, it, it is a, a really forthright uh, project. We are doing that, and, and Your Honor and Council, stat, excuse me, the city would be the the lead. We would be bidding it. We are designing the specs. It is it is now becoming a city project with a significant donation by the Rotary. 
Uh, do we have a uh, a timeline? I mean, I'm seeing here that the Rotary, Rotary would aggressively uh, continue their fundraising. Uh, 10 years, five years, 15 years, what are we looking at? They would like to be done fundraising in three years. So three years, we'll get a payback. Okay. All right, thank you. Your Honor. Uh, one second, Councilman Rolangi. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I think this is a, uh, a good plan. I, I commend both the uh, city staff, uh, the finance committee, which unfortunately I couldn't be at that meeting that night, so thanks for uh, taking care of that, guys. And then also the, the Rotary Club, of course, for uh, coming up with a solution like this. I am supportive of it. I'll admit to some mild fear. It might be unfounded. I hope it's unfounded. That once a project's fully paid for, sometimes it can be difficult to find private fundraising for it. And I, and I just want to um, encourage the city to be as helpful as possible to the Rotary Club as, as, as this fundraising takes a, takes a new turn. Uh, we obviously have as much of a vested interest now in getting paid back and having that thing paid for. And it may get a little tougher for the Rotary now to make the case that, you know, we can't do it without you, we can't do it without you. And, well, we, we could do it without you, but we really need your help to pay the city back. It's very different to pay back to do a fundraising effort for that. And I don't mean to um, make the efforts more difficult by pronouncing them in public, but I do think we do need to be open about what we're facing here, be clear about it, and uh, lend the Rotary Club, which has done so much excellent work to date, uh, all the help that we can. Councilmember Schultz. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> I had some very real concerns on on the whole issue, and um, as we went through the options at the Finance Committee, it became abundantly clear that if we were not to move forward at this point, the project was going to cost ultimately a lot more money, and that is a problem. And it there would have been a centerpiece that essentially didn't exist and um, those issues just seem to be really blocking our progress on the riverfront renaissance so so there is that issue and I think this is probably a good a good um, lesson and I, I don't mean to be you know shaking a finger but um, five hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money um, and fundraising is it's a it's a huge task I mean it's it seems like oh we'll be able to get a lot of people to do this and when there are so many there's so much competition look at what happened on uh, uh, give to the max day I mean how many emails did all of you get I you know 15 20 everybody wanting some money um, and so it's it's a huge undertaking to raise um, even a hundred thousand dollars a half a million this is a half a million dollars it's it's a huge project but I think it is very good for us to be able to move forward um, the city will be overseeing the project um, it will be part of the larger piece with Bolton and Mink and um, we had some long discussions with our council here um, on how to best to do this and I think we're all comfortable I hope he's comfortable um, that we're doing the right thing thank you thank you is there, any, uh, is there any further discussion on the motion before us? This is the first motion uh, to uh, authorize staff to work with Bolton Mink and the specs, change the specs to include the pavilion. We have a motion, right? Okay, I'll, I'll uh, seek a motion. Councilmember Balsamic makes that motion, seconded by Councilmember Schultz. That motion is now before the body. Is there any further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. And then next is a, uh, we need a motion to uh, have an agreement with the Rotary. Uh, Councilmember Alonji and second by Councilmember Rivnes. Uh, any further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails. Comments from the audience. Are there any comments from the audience this evening? Any comments from the audience? Okay. Ed, nothing on your mind? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, announcements. Council, announcements. Councilmember Alonji. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, i say it was my point of personal privilege for me and Councilmember Ellen Schultz. We continue to have uh, play State performances. <laughs> Uh, uh, play performances here at City Hall, Hastings City Hall, Black Dirt Theater is uh, uh, producing Once Upon a Trial, The Pig Who Cried Wolf. Uh, 
I want to say Her Honor does a wonderful job <laughs> in the last room, um, and the, and there is there may be a pig character. Uh, if you can imagine me looking even more adorable, Your Honor, with uh, with with pig ears, it is possible. Uh, but in all seriousness, I appreciate those of you who have already come to see the show. I know several of you already have. I think we've had a good time with it. It's here at City Hall. There'll be performances Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday through the afternoon and early evening, and Sunday, same deal. And uh, all you have to do is this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, and all you have to do is go to blackdirttheater.com and you can buy tickets you know right from their brown paper ticket service and uh, appreciate all the support we've gotten from city staff uh, i've done a marvelous job here in opening up rooms and making a lot of uh, things that were thought impossible <laughs> uh, making them possible so thank you melanie thanks to your staff and all the hard work that's been put into this by everybody involved much appreciated how's mayor balsanic it, yeah just a couple of things I, there was a very nice article uh, in yesterday's uh, Star Tribune about the play production and uh, you know lest some members of the public out there think that this is not a worthy uh, effort in terms of uh, promotion of the arts it is something that does not only promote the arts but it does promote our city uh, that was about a two and a half page article complete with pictures uh, of a council member uh, in in action, I was halfway expecting to come in here tonight and see whether my name was on the <laughs> on the front or whether I was uh, Miss Piggy or uh, <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood or somebody yeah, like that. I think you're very close close to the Thumbelina name. Thumbelina, okay, <laughs> Thumbelina. yeah. Well, I whoever whoever that person is, I came and sat down. My chair was way down. My my chin was touching the uh, countertop. Uh, but anyway, I. Uh, 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 break a leg it's mm -hmm. uh it's a very uh very very good artistic effort the second thing is uh on behalf of the american legion and the vfw uh don latch as commander in in addition to myself as commander i just want to thank the city for uh uh lending uh, uh some equipment for the uh uh for the dinner down at the legion uh, uh last tuesday night for veterans day and uh, for uh, uh, many, many other things that were accomplished uh, on Veterans Day. That was, a, that was a full day for our veterans and uh, one of the finest Veterans Days that I've ever participated in. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a real credit to our community that we have something like that. Uh, from, from the high school here in town to uh, uh, in Vermilion, the school district, the, I, I believe it was the Catholic school had uh, uh, a, uh, a program as well honoring veterans uh, and uh, it was just a nice day a very nice day well I, I had the distinct honor of uh, attending the Black Dirt Theater play and I thought that uh, Councilmember Alonji as uh, T-Pig uh, I thought your performance was hogwash and as Mayor Grimm I think your Councilmember Schultz uh, was quite grim uh, but on a serious note, outstanding work. I was very entertained. Uh, my family members and Susie were very entertained. Uh, it was an outstanding production, and we really enjoyed it. And uh, it is a, it's a great thing. And thanks for your participation in it. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, other announcements. Uh, Council uh, Parks and Recreation Commission will be meeting on Tuesday, November 18th at 6 p.m. here at City Hall. Oh, excuse me, at the Parks and Rec uh, uh, Department located at 920 10th Street. So Park and Rec Commission at the uh, Parks offices. HPC will be meeting on Tuesday also, Tuesday, uh, November 18th, 7 p.m. City Hall. The Public Safety Advisory Commission will be meeting on Thursday, November 20th at 6 p.m. at the police station. The Planning Committee of the City Council, Councilmember Alonji is the chair, with Councilmembers Balsanic and Hollebeck will meet on Monday, uh, November 24th at 6 p.m. at City Hall to discuss change to the city code to allow propane cylinder exchanges to have that discussion. Uh, the Planning Commission will next meet on Monday, uh, November 24th at 7 p.m. The Public Safety Committee of the City Council, chaired by Councilmember Hollenbeck and with uh, members uh, Sh Ellen Schultz and Rivness, will meet on Tuesday, November 25th at 7.30 a.m. at City Hall to discuss the Fire Department study implementation steps. We continue to move forward uh, with that program and that plan. Uh, on Thursday morning, of Thanksgiving, 
in downtown Hazings will be Gobblegate. So uh, that's a big fundraiser for Hazings Family Service. Uh, it's quite a, getting quite the reputation in the Twin Cities area, one of the major uh, events uh, in, uh, in, on Thanksgiving Day. And with that, uh, I want to remind folks that the city offices will be closed on Thursday and Friday, November 27th and 28th, uh, in observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, and we want to wish everyone a safe and happy Thanksgiving. And finally, uh, a note of condolences to uh, Councilmember Hollenbeck, who uh, unfortunately lost her sister and couldn't be with us uh, tonight. Uh, however, if she can find a little bit of time, we'll, we'll think of her. But it's also today her birthday, so I wanted to express a happy birthday to Councilmember Hollenbeck. But uh, see, certainly her and her family are in our thoughts and prayers. There's no other further uh, business before the City Council. A motion to adjourn is in order. Councilmember Schultz makes a motion to adjourn, seconded by Councilmember Nelson. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion prevails, and we are adjourned. Thank you.